Yeah. This is for everybody. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon all of you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of God, the beneficent, the most merciful, we bear witness that nothing should be worshipped except the creator of the heavens and the earth. And we bear witness to all of the great prophets that have been chosen by the divine for the guidance of all of humanity. And amongst those noble prophets, we recall our beloved prophet Ibrahim, our prophet Noah, the beloved prophet Jacob, known as Israel, the beloved prophet Moses, the beloved prophet and Messiah, as we recognize him to be, Jesus, the son of Maryam, and we send our peace and blessings upon the beloved prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah, born in the gates of Arabia in the holy city of Mecca. My brothers and sisters, I thank you first and foremost for this opportunity, and I thank the sisters and brothers for continuing this magnificent event called Sharing Ramadan. And I hope that for the few moments that we have, we can all just have a moment of, as some would call it, the elevation of consciousness. The word Som in the, month, in the month of Ramadan, the word Som in the Arabic language, it means to restrain, to have restraint. The Holy Quran teaches us that fasting was ordained for us as it was ordained for the righteous men and women in the days of old, that we may develop a sense of God consciousness and be aware of the presence as we would say, of the Holy One. Now, brothers and sisters, we don't have a lot of time, but time is our most valuable gift from God. And so, I just want you to take a little journey with me, if you don't mind. And this month of Ramadan, for the Muslim community, we have full belief that it is a month of mercy, a month of forgiveness. It is a month of compassion. It is a month and a time to share, but it's also a month to pursue knowledge of one's purpose in this creation. And that's what I want you to think about right now. The creation yes. of is not dangerous. It's known when that are properly in yes. many different languages. Even when you, the Muslim community does not have a monopoly on God or righteousness. The Jewish community, the Christian community, the Buddhists, the Hindus, the Sikhs, all of us in this creation, we don't have a monopoly on the maker. A great man by the name of Urquhart Urquh Tolle, you may have heard of his book. He wrote a book called The Power of Now, and he has another book called The New Earth. He said the greatest evil of the 21st century was that men, they made God into their own image. And as a result of that, we have taken on the position of judging, when in reality, the only judge is God. One of the most beautiful things about the teachings of Prophet Muhammad is his collection of hadith on intentions. Intentions. He says, every action has an intention behind it. I want you to think with me. Every intention there is that gives birth to an action, there's something behind it. Most people in life, they are disappointed by others because they have false expectations. And there's a certain place in our hearts that's for God and only God alone. And if you put anything else there, it will just give you more pain and more suffering. A wise woman once told me, I was complaining to her, and she said to me, I want to ask you a question. How many times have you been through this part? I said, about 50. She said, well, that. I said, what do you mean? She said, well, that. If you went through it 50 times, you haven't learned the lesson. Maybe on the 51st time, you'll get it. <laughs> God has a way of repeating things for us because as smart as we are, sometimes as human beings, we can be very unintelligent if that's the English word. So in Ramadan, we're supposed to think. We abstain from food and drink. We abstain from intimacy or lovemaking. And we reflect on the higher purpose for which we were made. 
I want you to think right now because brothers and sisters, the mind is the battlefield. If you brought Moses and Jesus and Muhammad and Abraham and Yahoo, the prophet Israel and the prophet Noah, if you brought the righteous women, the mother of Jesus, the wife of Pharaoh, the mother and sister of Moses and the righteous women that surrounded the Messiah, if you brought them in this room today, you would not find them debating religion. Because in reality, religion is man-made. I want you to think. Don't get upset. Think with me. When we were born, we were born with natural desires. Because when we fight against the food, what we're really talking about is the desires of the flesh and the appetite of our psychology. When we were born, we had no desire to make dollars. You didn't have a desire to make dollars, but you do now. Everywhere you go, there's an appetite that says Nicky D. Our children prefer McDonald's over a cooked meal. Why? Because someone understood the power huh, of marketing. They got to the market. The foods that we eat, in many times, are the source of our own sickness. Appetites. Desires are dangerous when they're not properly guided. Even when you have love for someone, you have to guide that love. Some people really don't understand what love is, especially those who profess to love God. There are people who say they love God, but they hate their neighbor. I say, why do you hate the guy? Man, he's a Republican. I'm a Democrat. I don't know what's going <laughs> No, I'm telling you, I watch our brothers and sisters in politics. And then we all go to the sanctuary and we pray that God guide our footsteps. But in the pursuit of a desire for position and power, we curse and slander each other's names and the names of our children in pursuit of a position. But if God wants you to be in a position of power and authority, he will do for you what he done for the righteous men and women of old. He will inspire you that you will be blessed with a vision for all people, black and white, rich and poor, Jew and Gentile, male and female, Young and old. That is the vision that God has for the human family. That we are one people, blessed and created by one God. Now, in the gateways of religion, people try to divide us. If I couldn't speak and a person asked me what my religion was, I wouldn't have a response. But you would know my religion by what I do. Come on, ladies, let's talk. I just want to talk to the ladies for a minute. Often men say they love a woman, but then they abuse that. We got domestic violence laws, and it's not part of the shirt, it's by the way. So you got domestic violence laws, because some of us don't know what love is. There are many women, their hearts have been shattered from day one, because as men, we were never really taught what true love is. We know what the flesh means. We know what desire means. We know we can speak words of kindness, but behind those words, the intention is deception. That's why if you go in the bar at night, or you go to these parties at night looking for love, you won't find love, sisters. You're going to find a nightmare. It's going to satisfy your flesh for the moment. But the vacancy that you feel is going to come right back because that's not the cure for what you're looking for. The same thing to those of us that pop them pills. Ain't nothing more stronger than the presence and love of God. God can heal anything. And he can take those of us that have broken dreams and place you on the wings of an eagle and you can fly high and manifest your destiny. Ramadan is a month of consciousness. If I love God, I will always love and respect Christians, Jews, Muslims, blacks, whites. It don't matter. Because you know what? God loved them enough that he brought them into existence. Because listen, brothers and sisters, the life you have is a gift of life. This is a precious gift that we have been given. The gift of life. I see some people, they wake up, I say, what's wrong? Man, it's a recession. Things look bad. No, no, people, no. America as a country 
based upon the vision of the founding fathers, some of them saw America as the potential new Jerusalem. Symbolically. And you know what? Their vision is manifested because at the crossroad in America, the Muslims, the Christians, and the Jews, they have to ask a common question. Are we human to each other? We have to ask that question. If you say you love Jesus, I say prove it. If you say you love Allah and you love Prophet Muhammad, I say prove it. If you tell me you love Moses, I say prove it. And the way you prove that love is not with words, it's with deeds. So tonight, there were people who they had good intentions. And God blessed them with a beautiful outcome. And we are blessed to be here sharing in the blessing of the magnificent creator. So what I want to do, in closing, not to be long, I want to read a verse from the Quran. And there was a beautiful program produced by HBO. It's called Quran by Hearts. And a wonderful American professor, she's a professor of music, she traveled all over the world because she was fascinated by the experience that children could memorize the Quran who didn't know Arabic, but they could memorize it word for word. There was something about the Quran, she said, I need to understand this. And she traveled all over the world, and she watched small children memorizing what we believe to be the word of God. And I want to share with you a beautiful verse from the Quran. It says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of God, the beneficent the Muslim. He says, Wamin ayati, from the signs of God. Wamin ayati, khalqu samawati wal awl. Wahtilafu al sinatakum, wa al wanikum, inna fi dalika la ayatan lila anameen. This is in the 30th chapter of the Quran. He says, from amongst the signs of God is the creation of the heavens and the earth. These are signs. They are wise people in the world. They study creation. And by studying the creation, they see the magnificence of the creator and they see the greatness of themselves. Because out of all the creatures God has created, you are the crown of his life. Allah says in the Quran, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا لِإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْصَنِ تَقْوِيمِ We have created the human being in the best of fashion. You don't strive for it. It was yours at birth. God gave you the potential for greatness at birth, but somebody gets into your head and cause you to doubt your own greatness and second guess your strength. Ramadan comes to remind us that we are not a weak people. We're strong. That we can learn the power of no. That we can control our desires. That we can have self-imposed discipline and it reminds us that in the world in which we live, the only person you can really change is yourself. A lot of us try to change other people. Some of us try to change our lives. You know, some of you have been married for a long time. How many ladies here married? Raise your hand. Even if you're not happy, I understand. <laughs> but some of us, when we get married, we've been working. Some of you have been married for 20 years. You're still trying to change her. She ain't changing. She'll make you think she changed, but when you leave, she's going back to the book. <laughs> Just a smile, Bia. Oh, ladies are very smart. I mean, women are very smart. Very smart. If you want to become smarter, you should study with them and study them. But the Quran says, from his side is the creation of the heavens and the earth. And he says, and the difference in their language. How many languages do you think exist on the planet Earth? A gift from God. We have a voice box and a tongue, which pronounces the letters. But you know there are probably at least two or three million languages on the planet? That's a sign of God. That from one human being, he could create multiple languages. He says the most in science is the colors and shades of your skin. I want you to think about that for a moment. Because unfortunately, we are overly race conscious. We have become obsessed with race and color to the point that we have lost our humanity as a people. You 
know, I once asked a blind man what color he was. And you know what he told me? He said, whatever color you decide you think I am. Because you know what? Color don't mean nothing. But it's a tool that can be used by the enemy. Some of us here have war over gender. Well, I'm not going to have no man tell me what to do. <clears throat> not me. I'm an independent woman. But we need each other as men. Our fathers are men. Our brothers are men. We'll give birth to sons that will become men. We need men in our community. We need strong, loving, kind, compassionate men that will be the protectors and the providers of good family life. We need men. We need fathers. In the prison system, the average young brother you meet that's in prison, 90% of them, the missing link from their lives is the presence of a nurturing father because we don't appreciate father. We have turned women and men against each other. Why? A loss of consciousness. But we make the child, we say, we make them in love. But we're not nurturing our children in love. They see division and hatred. But Allah says, of all the differences that you see in the world, it's amongst his signs. It's a blessing. These are guiding forces to those who can see. You see, brothers and sisters, a sign is a representation of something greater than itself. When you go out here, you want to see a stop sign. It's just a red sign with white letters. It says stop. But it can save your life or cause you to save the life of someone else. But it's a sign. Our doctors sometimes, we go to them and they say, look, I need to look for vital signs. Check his vital organs. What are the spiritual vital organs of a spiritual human being? How do you know you're alive or are you amongst the living dead? Because some people are walking. They look alive, but spiritually, they're just waiting for the funeral. So there's a beautiful quotation that I want to share with you from the great book. When the question was asked about love, for those of you that are Christians, you go home and read the book of Corinthians, because Paul was talking about love. He said, love is patient and kind. The next time somebody say they love you, I want you to look at them and see if they're patient and kind. Patience is the key to all victory in life. Endurance. Ramadan comes to teach us that we have the power to endure. And it reminds us that those of us who seek instant gratification in any endeavor, we're going down the path of self-destruction. Anything that you can have overnight will become a nightmare in due time. It's only a mirage. All the advertisement we see is a mirage. It's made to make you feel a certain way. And those who follow the winds of emotion, they're always lost. Sometimes you go buy something you think you need. You don't need it, you want it. And after you get it, you don't want it. Ladies, can I talk to you? You know how you buy those shoes? You gotta have those shoes, ladies. You go through that mall, you run, you get them shoes on, as soon as you get to the party, it hurts your feet so bad, you gotta take them off. Right? You gotta take these things off. Girl, I should have never brought these things here. But you thought you needed them. Women love shoes so much they down their feet. Because the greater beauty of a woman has been hit. The greatness and the beauty of us as men and women is in our very existence. You can make yourself more beautiful than what God has made. But he said that love is patient and kind. He says love does not envy or boast. True love, it is not one with envy or boasting. It is not arrogant nor rude. He says love does not insist on its own way. And this is the part I love most. He says love is not irritable or resentful. Meaning love is not a keeper of scores of wrongdoing. That is love. If someone really loves you, they won't tell you what you did 10 years ago. You see, the, the truth of the matter is, you really can't live successfully as a human being, and I'll conclude on this, until you understand the power of mercy and forgiveness. And you can only have mercy when you have power. When someone forgives you, it's not because they can't punish you, they can punish you. But they forgive you. And God teaches us, according to the Quranic teachings, 
that his gates of mercy are open to all of us. I share the verse with you. It says, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. قل العباد الذين أصرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقلقوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. He says, say to my servants. This is a Quranic verse. He says, say, قل العباد, say to my servants. That each and every one of us sitting here, we are all the servants of God. I don't care what you call yourself. At the end of the day, He is the King of all kings and He is the Master of eternity. And by death, we shall all surrender into his kingdom, into his will. But he says, say to my servants, who they have transgressed against themselves. See, brothers and sisters, some things that we do in life, we don't realize that we hurt the soul. We hurt the soul. He says, say to my servants, who have transgressed against themselves, do not lose hope of the mercy of God. For God is all forgiving, most merciful. My message to you tonight and to myself is lean on the wisdom of God and beg God every day for his mercy and his forgiveness. And know for sure, if you trust in God, he will be your best provider. The Lord is your best friend, for he is the provider of all provisions. And on the path to greatness, as America moves forward to that moment, that we call the perfect union, the Muslims and the Christians and the Jews, the Hindus and the Sikhs, we will once again have to sit down at the table and say, glory be unto God. Thank you very much. May God bless you. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.